All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who just came in, Doug is unfortunately out tonight. He is sick, so he asked me to take over for him. So I threw a presentation together. Uh, we're going to be talking about the energy centers or chakras and how they affect us in our every single day lives and how we can balance them and all of that good stuff. So it'll be part presentation and part discussion as well. Cool. All righty. So I'll, I'll go ahead and open it. And then if anybody feels <clears throat> on their heart to close it, they feel free to do so at the end of tonight's session. So if I could have everyone close their eyes. Infinite Creator, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and to join with virtual hands and minds. We thank you for the opportunity to fulfill your original, your original purpose for creation, which was to experience yourself. As self, teach yourself, and our self learns from self, and our self seeks the self. We ask that tonight is a great discussion and presentation, and that um, everyone leaves out of here with at least something. And in all this, we pray. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, so I'm going to share my screen. So today we're going to be talking about the energy centers, and these are this is something that everyone has, everyone experiences, and these are things that all of us are prone to being subject. And like I said, having our daily experiences informed by these chakras. So just a very brief overview. The energy centers are the seven rays, centers, or circuits of consciousness that filter and process the love light energy of the one creator. And they come, and that comes through both the south and north poles of our energy system. They have electromagnetic and metaphysical characteristics and intersect with the fields of mind and body. So we have prana or intelligent energy coming from us from the earth. So the sun gives the earth intelligent energy, and then the earth is constant, constantly supplying intelligent energy to us through our root chakra or our red ray. In conjunction with that, we also have intelligent energy coming from the universe or the creator itself, funneling, funneling into our energy system through our violet ray or the top. Each energy center is a hierarchical aspect of consciousness that vibrates with unique expressions, understandings, and speeds of rotation. Arranged on a spectrum of true color vibration, the energy centers describe the journey of all life experience from red to violet ray. Ra tells us in 49.6, each experience would be sequentially, sequ sequentially understood by the growing and seeking mind-body-spirit complex, first in terms of survival, which is red ray, then in terms of personal identity, orange ray, then in terms of social relations, which is yellow ray, then in terms of universal love, green ray, then in terms of how the experience may beget free communication, which is blue ray, then in terms of how the experience may be linked to universal energies, indigo ray, and finally in terms of the sacramental nature of each experience, which is the violet ray. So over here on the left, we have a diagram or an illustration of our chakras and their placements within our body. Each entity is born with all seven centers in potentiation or in latent unactivated form. Via the use of experiential data in the current incarnation, as well as work in previous incarnations, the centers become activated or reactivated one by one. Uh, session 4211, question. How can an individual assess what energy centers within its being are activated and in no immediate need of further attention? And which energy centers are not activated are in need of immediate attention. Ra, I am Ra. The thoughts of an entity, its feelings or emotions, and least of all, its behavior are the signposts for the teaching learning of self by self. In the analysis of one's experience within a day, an entity may assess what it considers to be inappropriate thoughts, behaviors, feelings, and emotions. In examining these inappropriate activities of mind, body, and spirit complexes, the entity may then place these distortions in the proper vibrational ray and thus see where work is needed. So for instance, if you're going through a regular day and someone you're headed to work and someone in traffic cuts you off and you get pissed off, you get impatient. That right there lets you know that there's some form of blockage or some form of dimness within one of your energy centers because you have that reaction. And so we're going to get to how to balance that later. And Ra uses the example of impatience versus impatience. For another example would be if you're having issues with a, a colleague or a spouse, one other person, then that lets you know that that 
that energy or that issue is thus coming out or springing forth from the orange ray, which has to do with relationships with ourselves and then one other person. Through disciplined work and consciousness, over time, the energy centers become crystallized, forming unique, regularized structures, which can be seen over here on the left, which are able to deliver high energy, higher energy voltage for service, seeking sexual energy transport and all energy expenditures. The more strongly the entity concentrates its will upon and refines or purifies each energy center, the more the will uses the catalyst of that corresponding portion of life experience the more brilliant or rotationally active each center will be. Our seniors can become blocked or overstimulated. So before we get into um, blockages, does anyone have any questions on the general kind of brief overview of the chakras? Does anyone no have any questions? questions before we no, move on? no questions, but it'll be interesting to talk about. I understand blocked, but overstimulated will be interesting when we get to that. Absolutely. All right, so if no one has questions, we'll go ahead and move on. So blockages. Through distortion in belief, perception, or thought, an entity may literally block a portion or aspect of the intelligent love light energy moving into and through the energy system at any center or a combination of centers and partial or in full. So for instance, if you're somebody who constantly talks down on yourself or doesn't talk the nicest to yourself, then that alone can cause blockages in the orange ray which like I said, has to, which corresponds to and has to do with our relationship with self and one other person. Blockages may occur in the body, the mind, the spirit, or in a combination thereof. It may manifest themselves in any number of ways, including in various personality structures, complexes, and personas, mental, physical, or spiritual pain, and ill health. The opposite of blockage is overstimulation or overactivation. This is also an unbalanced, uh, unbalanced energetic dynamic. So we know from raw that catalysts not processed by the mind is given to the body. So say if you're having some sort of health issue within the body, it is best to look at the area that you're having that issue or the pain or the tingling or the feeling. And then you may be able to correspond that physical catalyst back to the energetic catalyst that your body is trying to get you to consciously tackle or control. Raw tells us that cancer is an example of this, someone who holds on to anger for many, many, many years and never balances it or forgives the other party, that eventually is given to the body. And in that book is what becomes cancer in a lot of people. And um, Ross says that someone can cure their cancer if they are able to understand and get to the root of what causes it, the mental distortion that causes cancer, the anger and forgiveness and are able to heal themselves. Blockage of the energy centers can happen at any moment. The depth or fullness of blockage, and depending perhaps on the intensity of the catalyst, but blockage is also a manifestation of pre-incarnation design. Quo tells us some blockages that are looked at in our experience are placed there by the self before incarnation, not in order to break through quickly, but in order to initiate a process of self-acceptance, self-understanding, and self-forgiveness. So that is far deeper than the issue that begins this process. So what they're saying here is that each and every single person, when we're planning our upcoming incarnation, we want intentionally dim or block a few or maybe, you know, a combination of energy centers in order that catalysts may then spring forth from that so that we can balance it. So, for example, someone who in a past life, say, for instance, didn't have a voice. They struggled with communicating and expressing their voice and how they truly feel. When they die, they look back at their previous life. They will see, okay, that's something I need to work on in my next life. So in planning the next incarnation, they will then dim the Blu-ray chakra, which has to do with open communication and acceptance in order that catalysts thus form around that in order to get them to balance and open and unblock the Blu-ray. So our blockages are both occur from both in our daily lives and all of some of these blockages are, were also placed there by us before we incarnated for the purpose of unblocking or balancing or learning a lesson pertaining to that chakra. Healing, either by of self, by self, or with the aid of the catalyst of a healer is a means of unblocking and rebalancing blocked energy. Dreams may also yield clues to blockage and the means of unblocking energy. Blockage must be cleared in order from red ray upwards. So it comes kind of like a stair step. They all 
um, affect each other starting from the bottom and going up. You know, you can't do, you can't open or unblock your yellow ray without first unblocking or opening your red and orange ray. Only when someone says, you know, how can you love someone else if you don't love yourself? But that relates to the orange ray. How can you, if you don't love yourself in the orange ray, then the energy of the creator is going to be restricted and flowing up to the green heart. So they're up to the green ray, which will then cause you difficulties in loving others and accepting others. Ross says that the root cause of blockage is the, oh, I'm sorry, the final purpose of clearing, unblocking, or balancing each energy center is to allow the meeting place of the outer and inner energies to occur at the indigo ray vibration, which is the third eye chakra, thus making contact with intelligent infinity and dissolving all illusions of separation. So pretty much what this means here is that everyone has a unique balance of chakras and energy centers. And so whenever that balance is able to push forward the light from the creator up all the way to our indigo center, and it meets the prana or the energy that is given from the creator from the top down, when those two energies meet in the indigo ray center, that's when pretty much miracle things we call miracles or power happens. That's how Jesus was able to turn water into wine. That's how Christian Hinduism was able to lift the mountain is because they had a certain energetic balance that allowed the energy of the creator to flow through their body unimpeded and then meet within the indigo ray. And the indigo ray is what caught, what is what allows people to, you know, do those powerful things or miraculous things or things that allow them to be the creator in energy. Ross says that the root cause of blockage is the lack of the ability to see the other self as the creator or to phrase it this differently, the lack of love. It seems safe to assume that blockage could also be caused by the inability to see the creator in the self or in any aspect of creation. Does um, anyone have any questions on blockages? I was curious. I have two girlfriends who are going through or have had breast cancer, and I was just wondering if the placement of the cancer is more information. Like, is the breast indicative of something, you know? Right. So with the breast, that would usually mean something within the heart chakra, since that's they're located right there within the heart chakra. I can put that one more. And this isn't true across the board. Sometimes cancer is purely physical or genetic, but a lot of times it is outgrowth, a catalyst from our energy centers. And so being that the heart chakra is placed directly between the breasts, then my personal assumption would be that that catalyst or issues that they're having has to do with the open heart or not being able to open the heart. Okay. That makes sense. Great questions. Uh, anyone have anyone else have any questions? Well, that might answer that might answer my question too. When I was talking about based on where if energy can be held right there in the middle, in the green ray, it'd be actually between the breast, and you're holding, and it's it's almost like a feeling, well, definitely a physical symptom, an uncomfortable energy of some kind. So that would be also, I would say. I don't know, it kind of feels like overstimulation, but it could be a blockage. So either way, it's unbalanced energy. And from what I hear you say, DeMarcus, it might have to do with not being able to, well, lack of love or not being able to open your heart. I don't know. Some Is there more? Can you expand a little more on that? Or is there any Are you more? asking about the, um, how the physical sensations we feel correspond to that? Yeah, and they, and they, and there might be physical sensations that aren't necessarily com- comfortable. It could be feel like a little angst or a little anxiety or Gosh. some sort of tension. So, me personally, anytime I have a moment of, I guess you can say, discord with someone or any type of issue with someone, I literally feel a sort of fluttering of the heart. I can mm-hmm. physically feel it. Mm-hmm. And that's the heart, my heart energy center letting me know that, hey, there's a blockage or there's an issue within your heart center. And that's been reflected physically as, like I said, a little flutter. So it may not always be something as serious as cancer. It could be a, a little tingling. You might, for instance, I don't know, may have a lot of acne just pop up out of nowhere but in that area, for instance. And that's the body letting you know, since you haven't paid attention to it mentally, then, hey, your body is now reaching out for you to take attention. Does that, make, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, anyone else have any questions? Um, yeah, will you kind of go back over like the, it has to go from, so let's say you've got your breast cancer and that's the heart area. So how would you clear that from the red rate up? 
So that would be pretty much an understanding that first you have to be solid within your security, which would be the red ray. And then from there, you go to your orange ray, which means you would need to be right with yourself. And then from there, you go into the yellow ray and it's like, okay, then to be right with myself, then to be right with others in a societal setting. And then getting up to the green ray, which is open heart, being able to love others unconditionally without expectation in return. So going in order, it would cause you to look at all of the, all four of those centers in order. So like I said, red ray, red ray, what was it or what issue caused me to lose my sense of security or, you know, sense of just safety or just basic vitality? Then orange ray, then what issue caused me to not be right or to have discord within myself? And then how did that cause issues between me and others? And then going into a heart chakra, heart chakra and trying to figure out why you were unable to open your heart. Does that answer your question? I think so. Is it always that you would necessarily have problems all the way down or would it be like, you know, socially speaking, I'm pretty good, but I feel insecure or my safety is at risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you, are there ones where it's not so relevant, but then this one is, then. Gotcha. Absolutely. So if, for instance, you're saying if you, if you do really well in social settings, but you know, kind of to yourself, you may not be that confident. Absolutely. And so pretty much how energy flows through the chakras. If for instance, the orange ray is dimmed a little bit, then the energy is still getting through to the yellow ray. It just may be a little constricted, but you can have some of the higher rays be a little more activated than some of the, low, the lower rays. And that's kind of how they would manifest themselves. Does that answer your question? I think so. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. These are great questions. Anyone have anything else? We're going to break down. We're going to go through each chakra individually next. Yeah, Danny. Yeah. So the, the paragraph that says, thus making contact with intelligent infinity and dissolving all illusions of separation. I'm sorry. There, was wondering if you could talk about how you see separation there. I mean, that word is very common in a lot of channel works these days. And I would see the root of everything we're talking about to have it to be grounded in a sense of separation. How how would you define that with with, with all the experience you have with the raw material? Excuse me. So initially, separation is the illusion that the creator engages itself in in order to know itself. The flip side of that is that we are all one. So therefore, separation is an illusion. It's a paradox. And so we are, we appear to be separate parts. You appear to be your own person. I'd appear to be my own person. Your cat is separate from you. Your spouse is separate from you. And so that is a separation or the illusion of separation that Ra refers to. Now, the main purpose of spiritual evolution throughout all the densities is to dissolve the separation. And this is, this is work that takes numerous lifetimes over through numerous densities. The work of spiritual evolution is lessening those illusions of separation so that the more advanced you get spiritually, the more that you grow, you start seeing others as yourself. And then you start seeing the planet and pretty much everything else around you as the self or as one, thus dissolving all illusions of separation. So pretty much separation, like I said, is just the view or the thought that there are separate things from you. And like I said, that is the illusion that the creator engages itself. It has to, since it's the only thing that exists, it has to create some sort of illusion of affinity or separateness in order to experience itself. Experience itself. To answer your question. Yeah, I was just, I was curious. I mean, I've kind of divided that into, in my mind, that the separation was necessary for there to be a knower and a known for a relationship to happen when, when there was only unity and oneness. Uh, it was uh, God couldn't know herself itself, but in that separation that was necessary for relationship and knowing, I use the term separate separateness. That in that experience, the illusion was that that you truly really were separate, although you were still in unity, just a form of extension, so knowingness could take place. And and like once a necessary separation, one one was was kind of the fall amidst the the necessary process. And so I right. think I does that sound reasonable too to you? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Definitely resonates. All right. Anyone have any other questions or anything? 
All right. So we're going to go ahead and move it on. And we're going to break down each individual chakra. All righty. So the red ray, also known as the root chakra, it is the center of survival, sexual reproduction, and the fundamental vitality of self. This ray receives the life-giving prana or intelligent energy from the earth. So at all moments of our life, we are constantly being fed this intelligent energy from the earth, which receives it from the sun. Sort of like we're hooked up to a a power source. Basic blockages of the red ray. In 34.15, raw calls this ray fixed. It is not clear if it cannot be blocked or if it can be activated and open to a greater degree. Some students of Confederation philosophy believe that this ray may be partially blocked by survival issues. And some of those issues I have listed here are things such as financial concerns, when you're concerned for your safety, or if you're having reproductive complications. All of those things are outgrowth of the red ray chakra and indicate some sort of blockage. Now, does anyone here, if, if anyone here would like to share, can you think of any red, uh, red ray issues or catalysts that you may have experienced within your life or currently? Any examples of red ray? It feels like to me, because of the word survival, if you happen to be the kind of person that's stuck in fight or flight mode for years, mm-hmm. I mean, a long time, I mean, which I can say has you know, kind of been my experience personally, for whatever reason. And, and, you know, the survival has to do a little bit with safety. You know, maybe there was, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Exactly right. And I feel like as a society, this is kind of something that we're dealing with as a whole, you know, as the cost of living is rising, working, you know, wages are not rising and people are really struggling to make a living and survive. Um, I feel that as a society, as a whole, our red rates being threatened right now. It's being taking a lot of hits. A lot of people worry about their finances. A lot of people worry about their safety. And so I think as a collective, we are collectively really trying to deal with red ray accounts. So would you say then that that is maybe where the dark night of the soul resides is in the root chakra? Hmm. That's what a I'm good question. It's like, I'm sorry, was that Barbara that just spoke? Yes. So it's, it's almost like the universe is bringing about a collective dark night of the soul through all of this red ray panic. All these finding everything you just said that just makes sense to me because I I certainly I had my dark night of the soul and I felt very much just in danger. I was in fight or flight for about two years. Wow, and that is powerful. That's a powerful catalyst. Yeah, and so most definitely. So, would you say? I mean, what are your thoughts on where the dark night of the soul resides? Well, I've never really thought about that. I would say. That the dark night can encompass all of the chakras, maybe that it would start at the at the um, at the red ray and then kind of encompass all of the chakras. That's really a great question. I, can, I don't know if I can fully answer that. I haven't really thought about it. Um, we can back to us. Oh, for sure. For, yeah, no, that's that's definitely something I'm gonna I'll look, look into. Thank you for that. I'm inclined to agree with you, Demarcus, especially from the red way uh, red ray all the way up to the uh, blue ray i can see where you can have yeah exactly Mm -hmm. i wanted to offer something Mm -hmm. from my perspective i think that that dark night of the soul feeling it might be based in wherever it's coming from in the chakra system whatever through our particular and unique distortions triggers that red ray discomfort in us it could come from you know anywhere or anything it's what makes us feel root insecure and root unsafe that that's where it lies wherever it you know whichever place in you know the 3d life or chakra that it comes from it's hitting us in that red ray spot i like that thank you for that it would seem to me kind of root would start there in the red but you would almost have to be at a certain level of consciousness to be able to even process and experience it, which would bring it up, you know, into it, I think at least yellow or green. Cause probably when that, I mean, you think of, of human beings long, long ago that were only in kind of that, that survival mode of flight or fight, but we, we transcend that, which I think is what makes it, such a dark night of the soul is because it engages our thought and feeling processes on these higher levels and, and makes it 
so challenging. Otherwise, you could probably get out of it if you just got to a safe place, you know, like an animal might. Would be my thought. Hmm. Thank you for that. It's a very thought-provoking question, Susie. Thank you. That's definitely something I'm going to have to look into. Hmm. All right. Does anyone have any other questions or comments on the red ray chakra? All right. We're going to the orange ray. The orange ray is also known as the sacral chakra, and it is the center of personal and emotional identity, expression of power on an individual basis, and a relationship of self to other self or one other person. Basic blockages within the orange ray are blockage will often demonstrate itself as personal eccentricities or distortions with regard to self-conscious understanding or acceptance of self. So for instance, blockages in the orange ray may look like a lack of self-love or acceptance or issues with a spouse or a colleague or a friend with one other person. And so I know a lot of people, including myself, deal with the catalyst of a lack of self-love or acceptance, and that doing work and improving that is doing work and unblocking the orange red. So does anyone here have um, any other examples that they'd like to share or questions on the orange red? I was just thinking about where a narcissist lives. Mm, That would be the next array. Okay. That's actually a blockage of the yellow ray. Okay. Anyone else for an orange ray? All right. So we're going to go on to yellow. So the yellow ray is the solar plexus chakra, and it is the center of identity in groups and power relationships in and among groups. So basic blo- uh, blockages resemble most closely that which can be called ego. Blockages in this center will often manifest as distortions towards power and manipulation. As such as not as Susie was saying, narcissism and other social behaviors concerning those close and associated other selves. To completely unblock this rate, each entity must love all which are in relationship to it, with hope only of the other selves, joy, peace, and comfort. So our other rate has to do with how we are in group settings or societal settings. For instance, that would be within this one, this law of one group, that how we interact, you know, how we respond with each other is affecting the other rate. For instance, you within your workplace, you within your church, you within your study group, you within a chapter of an organization, all of those things, you and the societal self are, is what causes, which is what activates or blocks the yellow ray. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the yellow ray? Or if anyone can think of any other examples like narcissism um, of how they've seen the yellow ray expressed in people. Well, if you read the last one about, you know, if you, ha- if you blo- have blockages, in the first three centers, and you'll continue having difficulties, you know, further seeking of the law of one. But, and, you know, for me personally, it seems, you know, I can run through those, constantly run through red, orange, yellow, it might be orange, it might move back to yellow, cut down, or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just in daily life, it might not be huge things that, that crop up, but it seems like it's a sort of a, daily journey journey as a human that um, is especially human. in our world yeah even all the way up to the 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 blu-ray because i think of the blu-ray is where you talk you speak you know you communicate you yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and that's a that's a great i mean it, you, it is listed down here those with blockages in the uh, sorry those with blockages in the first three energy centers will have issues so if you're having issues, you know, like I said, with your safety, with yourself and with others, then it's going to be extremely hard for you to be able to open your heart and unconditional love to others. Does anyone have anyone else have any questions or comments? What would be the like physical effect of the yellow, yellow ray if you had a blockage there? So speaking from personal experience, so the yellow ray is located about two or three fingers below the little where your brick cage kind of meets in the center. Um, it's about two or three fingers below that. And so from personal experience, I've had stomach aches there. They weren't necessarily in the stomach, stomach, but kind of in the upper stomach, that area, I've had aches and pains. And thanks to the law of one that let me know that, okay, there might be some blockage there. You know, at first I thought maybe I ate something bad, but it kept persisting for a few weeks. So I said, okay, maybe it's my other ray chakra. Maybe there's a blockage there and maybe I need to, balance it and so having that upper stomach pain and then taking the time to get to the root of the problem and unblocking it then the pain so that's that's one example from personal experience does anyone else have 
You, you could also possibly have because, you know, we have a backside too. So it could be <laughs> back pain yep. in that area, whether, you know. Absolutely. Did that um, answer your question, Claire? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any um, other examples of yellow ray blockages or any comments or anything? Or questions? Well, I'll just say the kidneys, kidneys in that area. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. A lot of people have kidney issues. Yeah. Marcus, does does uh, what is my question? I've seen an acupuncturist, and I'm just curious if any of these correspond to any of the Chinese. Like, I had a high stomach pain, I, or maybe even my below my diaphragm, and I had heard that that was possibly anger, un, you know, expressed anger. So do you see any correlation between, or maybe you don't even know, which is okay, Chinese meridians or acupuncture? Absolutely. So acupuncture does involve doing work on the chakras. So we have seven main chakras, and each of those chakras kind of have sub chakras that are all over our body. So we have different, many different points of energy um, centers, but these seven that line on the spine are the main ones. And so Chinese acupuncture, they take into account the many other energy points within our body that all correspond back to the main seven. And that's pretty much what acupuncture, that's what they're doing. They're working with the additional energy points that correlate to the main seven. So it's interesting. So Chinese medicine, has many more they have a, a focus on many more energy centers rather than just the, the primary seven does that did that answer your question yes yeah that's interesting so uh, any other questions or comments on the other way before you all right we're going to go to the green way which is important right now as we are in fourth density harvest the heart chakra is the center of universal and unconditional love acceptance non-judgment and healing the key to protection and the springboard to an intelligent infinity. And this you're on the service itself. That basic blockages in this center would be may manifest as difficulties in expressing universal love or compassion. The awareness of all as creator is that which opens the green ray energy center. Now, this is probably one of the hardest, uh, in my opinion, to achieve the opening of, especially in our society, where it's so, you know, me versus you, et cetera. And so the green way pretty much has to do with being able to love the creation and those within the creation unconditionally and without any expectation of return. So blockages in the green way could, you know, could come from you having an issue with, with a, another person and not being able to open your heart to them. Me personally, there's an is, is, issue with the coworker. So I'm currently trying to work on opening my heart and being able to love them unconditionally, regardless of the issues that we're having. So doing that sort of work is I'm working on unblocking or strengthening my green ray. Does anyone have any um, questions or comments or examples of the green ray? Politic. Yeah. <laughs> That's one that closes it for sure. Marcus, I'm wondering too about what we might call the collective agreements. I mean, with us being in third density, if I understand, and the harvest will be into fourth, so when we move into green ray and up, we're even really stretching us as third density level human beings to to integrate and understand these densities as we go up. So it seems like we might be somewhat limited just by our collective movement that we're a, a part of. <laughs> and then I also had a thought when you talk about physical manifestations of blockages, we think about cancer, how much cancer there is in the world today and i think of the heart and i don't ever think i've ever heard of someone having cancer in their heart now maybe that's true but i usually think of heart attacks and failures and stuff but that just dawned on me that's kind of, if that's true that's kind of interesting that something entirely different goes in on in the heart other than than, than cancer i think it was um susie who asked earlier about breast cancer so being that the the breasts are within the general vicinity of the heart, then I, me personally, I can see breast cancer being an outgrowth of heart rate blockage. Because usually cancer has to do with 
holding on to anger and not being able to forgive someone for a very, very, very long time, which is a closing or blockage of the green away heart, because then you're not able to open your heart or love them or express that love to them. And so and I, I was thinking of as, as an organ though within the body. Oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting one. That is a very interesting one, but you brought up a good point with heart attacks. For instance, that may be a physical outgrowth of a greenway blockage. Yeah. Hmm. Other, um, oh, go ahead. Well, and, and then the other part is kind of what the densities, you know, I mean, we kind of are, are, are mainly in a third density or the yellow ray as, as, what I would call like a collective or social consciousness. So movement up from there to me even seems more challenging to, to really fully move into those those ones that I would associate with higher densities too, right? Aren't the chakras kind of related to density? They are. In the uh, so our chakras are pretty much the seven densities in miniature. So the, the densities are the chakras of the creator, essentially, on, on the macro universal scale each density is the creator chakra and then on the micro scale each chakra in our own bodies correlates to each density and you're right and that it is very hard especially within our density especially with the veil to open the green ray art because you know it we are veil so it's damn near impossible to see the creator in others it's in it's very hard to see that unity so we have to strive which is why graduation to fourth density requires that if you're on the positive path, that you are able to open your heart at least 51% of the time. So at least just a little more than half of the time within your life, you are able to open your heart and then you have achieved, uh, you will then achieve graduation to the fourth density. So you don't have to have your heart open 70% of your life. That That's very hard, especially in our society. But as long as, like I said, a little bit over half of the time you have an open heart, then you are able to graduate to the fourth density. Thank you. Other, I would um, like. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I would like to basically learn how to use these energy centers. You know, move through them. My, I was talking with my spiritual advisor, and I feel like I'm was living too much in my heart center. Which could that be a good thing? And now I feel like the people that have wronged me, it's, I have a hard time being in that 51%. So I would like to learn how to move this energy. So we're actually going to, um, after we go, we break down in chakra, we're going to get into balancing and have a balance so that that'll help you out tremendously. Thank also, you. No problem. Um, like I said earlier, we have blockages, but we also have overstimulation. So, you know, if you were in your heart too much, then that could have been a overstimulation or overactivation of the greenway, which can cause problems within itself. All right. So we're going to move on to the blue ray. The blue ray, also known as the throat chakra, is the center of wisdom. Oops, let me go back. The center of wisdom, light, honesty, clarity, and inspiration. First true spiritual ray in that all transfers are of a nature which has integrated mind, body, and spirit in self-knowing. The blue ray communicates to others this entirety of beingness and is the first center to radiate without the necessity of response. So blue ray is essentially um, the throat chakra. It has to do with open communication. The first giving beyond green ray is the giving of acceptance or freedom, thus allowing the, recipi the recipient of blue ray energy transfer the opportunity for a feeling of being accepted Thus freeing that other self to express itself to the giver of this ray. So what that means pretty much is if you're having dialogue with someone and you express acceptance, then they're going to feel more comfortable within expressing themselves back to you. So for instance, that could look like maybe if you're in therapy, the therapist will communicate or give a blue ray transfer that, hey, I accept you. You can trust me. You know, everything is good. And that will then cause you to trust them and feel accepted. And so thus your Blu-ray is then strengthened and there is a there is very little restriction of flow. So basic blockages in that are entities blocked in this area may have difficulty in grasping its own spirit and mind complexes and further difficulty in expressing such understanding of self. They may also have difficulties in accepting communication from other selves. So in general, Blu-ray has to do with the expression of self and open and free communication. Does anyone have any questions, comments on the Blu-ray? 
any examples of blockages that they may have experienced or seen? I just keep going back to, I'm trying to apply all these things with what's going on in the world today. And I, I just think that gaslighting has become a huge term. And I think as we've been living with gaslighting, as pretend it doesn't exist, pretend it doesn't exist forever. Yeah. And now suddenly we're like, we have a term for it and it's, we're seeing it and it's becoming very unacceptable. And I think that it's promoting authenticity. I think there's still people that aren't quite comfortable expressing themselves, but yeah, I just, I'm just seeing what's going on now with gaslighting as an example of Blu-ray shenanigans. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I almost kind of look at it as we individually have chakras, but as a society, we also have chakras well as well. So a lot of the collective societal things that you're referring to, I feel like, you know, kind of refers back to that collective chakra of the throat of the Blu-ray, you know, the gaslighting. And like you said, it's starting to become unacceptable and people are working to be able to communicate effectively and to feel accepted. That's, that's a great point. Anyone else on the uh, Blu-ray? Like I said earlier, this may blockage in the Blu-ray may be uh, if you have issues expressing yourself or being issues communicating or finding your voice. Those are often um, signposts of a Blu-ray blockage. All right, we're going to go move on to the Indigo Ray, which is probably one of my favorites. Also known as the third eye chakra, the Indigo Ray is the gateway to intelligent infinity. It is the center of faith, of the adept, of magical workings, prayerful intention, and the radiance of being the work of spirit. It is also the seat of the logos, the ray of intelligent energy and infinite possibilities fed by the disciplines of the personality. So pretty much the indigo ray is the ray where all of the cool, powerful stuff is done and work is done. Like I say, Jesus was able to do the things he was able to do because he had an energetic balance that allowed him to have a fully activated and balanced indigo ray. The Atlanteans, for instance, were able to consciously access the indigo ray and with that with that power they were able to create life forms through crystals and so on and so forth so like i said a lot of the things that we attribute to power or miracles or magic are it's work that comes from the indigo ray common blockages in the indigo ray in the center may experience a lessening of the influx of intelligent energy due to manifestations which appear as a sense of unworthiness that struggles to accept the reality of self as creator so one thing that Raw tells us really blocks this ray are feelings of unworthiness, especially as unworthiness after, as the creator. So for instance, someone who has really bad imposter syndrome may suffer from indigo ray blockages. And also, and like I said in the first paragraph, the indigo ray is actually where the logos resides. So we know the logos is the creator. It is the consciousness, the love force energy of the creator. And so it sits there. And I like that it's called the third eye chakra because I kind of attribute that third eye to the eye of the creator. It is the eye of the logos. The logos is constantly learning through our experiences. So our experiences that all of our days within the incarnation, everything that we go through, the logos is quite literally learning every day, at every minute through the indigo ray. And that's where it has its seat at. Does anyone have any questions on the indigo ray? Well, I'm just going to say, I'm curious about if so, that's kind of like in the center of the forehead, but what about headaches that go from the third eye and expand out like towards the temples? <laughs> I, would I would associate that with the indigo ray as well. Since it's like, since in that general vicinity, <laughs> yeah. but it's also yeah. kind of spread around. Yeah. Would blockages in this chakra be correlated to emotional or? cognitive instability like just things under the umbrella of madness yes i personally personally believe so yes umbrella of what madness madness like somebody who appears schizophrenic but maybe there's something else going on is that what you mean yes and and like severe emotional disturbances like borderline personality disorder or histrionic disorder you know the the, the wonderful cat category of things covered in the DSM-5. <laughs> I can't, uh, Go ahead, Demarcus. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I can't answer that in the affirmative, but I do believe those things are linked to the indigo, right? For sure. Go ahead, Dan. 
puzzling me is that these seem to be hierarchical in terms of consciousness, ascension in a way. Mm -hmm. So to have a difficulty at the indigo ray level, and this is where the adept is and the magical workings and such, it seems like some of the things would definitely be worked through at all these lower levels before you would be at that indigo ray level in terms of a general way of 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 being being and expressing in life so i don't know like when i get down to this sense of unworthiness which says that struggles to accept the reality of self as creator and that's a pretty high level to fully move into right. accepting yourself as creator so maybe is there some hierarchical aspect to that so there's a there's still some unworthiness in seeing ourselves fully as the creator, which might be a lot different than unworthiness at a red or orange level, which might just be a general sense of not even being worthy to be alive. You know, I mean, a real deep, a much more basic level that might have been transcended at some point, but then there's still some blockage, I guess, at the indigo ray level, which would be a pretty high place to move on through into the self as creator. I'm absolutely thinking that it's it's and i was actually thinking about that when i was doing this presentation about the difference it is a much deeper sense of acceptance or worthiness of self you know like you said when you're dealing with maybe a red orange or a yellow sense of unworthiness those may not be as deep you know but in terms of the indigo ray not seeing you in order to do work in the indigo ray you have to accept yourself as a creator and then see yourself as a creator and so not feeling worthy and as a creator, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough. I don't have these powers. I'm not able to do these things. Like, who am I to say I'm the creator? Those things are the, or the sort of the deeper, the deeper sense of unworthiness that has to do with the indigo red. So I definitely agree. Are there um, any other questions on the indigo red? Right, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, gosh, I don't want to blow anybody's mind here. I don't know. No, go ahead. So I, I actually did some psychedelics and I had this experience, or it was toad venom and I, it was, it was insane. It was, it was a, a deep conversation with God, so to speak. And it was asking me to accept myself as the creator, but it, it kept the way it felt in the moment. I can accept myself right now as one of many creators you know we're all we all have the creative spark in us we're all a part and piece of god and i see us all more like if the full mirror is god and mm -hmm. you shut the mirror, we're still all parts of god but what i it, it felt like it was making me insane because it wanted me to say i am god and i just could not would not and there was just this fight like no i'm just i don't i'm not the god so i think it's and i still haven't been able to wrap my brain around that to accept yourself as the creator what does that mean what does that look like completely you know how does that look like to you so essentially it's it's tough to do and it takes a lot of work but essentially it's the first thing is breaking through the illusion itself and recognizing that there truly is no separation and that everything that exists is God. God is the only thing that exists. There is nothing outside of God at all. Everything that exists is God. God created the universe from within itself. And so because God is the only thing that exists, then that must mean that you yourself are God. You yourself are the God experiencing itself. You know, you have this, what seems to be a separate body or a separate soul in order for the creator to experience self. But at the end of the day, even though you are a piece of the puzzle, you still contain the whole of the puzzle. That's why Ross says that the universe is holographic in nature. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much accepting yourself as a creator would be to see and to accept that you truly are the God, you are the infinite creator experiencing itself. And like I said, this is work that takes a lot of time to do, maybe even over several lifetimes. Does that answer your question? I think, I think it's very, it's tough. And I, I think that's something that for me too is letting go of the 
idea. I was not raised religiously at all, but I still grew up kind of as a child having that old white dude with the beard and the cloud kind of thing. (laughs) Not that, you know? And so I think letting go of that idea as God is this one patriarchal thou shalt, you know, and seeing God more as an energy and a source is, is easier to wrap my brain around, but definitely not the dude with the beard and sky that just. Right. And it's definitely a struggle. I had to deprogram myself from that sort of thing. Also, when I came into the law of ones, like, you know, God's not some man in the sky and the throne. God is quite literally me, everything, the air I breathe, so on and so forth. Kind of the ocean and the waves scenarios, what that reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to volunteer something as a, as a fellow frequent cosmonaut. Go for it. Um, I had a similar experience one time when I was on a healing journey with LSD. And I was like, I don't understand this. Motherfucker, you're going to need to draw this. Like, we we, we going to draw this so I get yes. this. Yes. And in the, draw- <laughs> in the drawing, I was like, I was like, I'm willing to take this ride with you. If you can, like, help me see. And so I got up some crayons. <laughs> and <laughs> it was, so then the first step that I heard was, okay, draw what you're confused about. And I was like, okay. So if we're saying God is here, and then I drew God, like, a few inches above everything else. And we're all here. And you're telling me I am God. You're telling me that I am above everything else. And then I heard so gently and so lovingly. Very good. That's the confusion that wants to get undone here. Pick up every all the things that you think are beneath and bring them right up to the same level with God and put everything on the exact same level. Everything and everyone is on that higher plane. There is no lower. There is no lower that God sits above in terms of power or influence or worthiness there are higher layers of comprehension but just like and i was shown just like an adult has higher layers of comprehension but is not inherently more worthy than an infant same thing (laughs) like same thing um i don't know if that's helpful it Um, is helpful but that was was what i got when i when i sassed back in the universe (laughs) (laughs) we still have a drawing Kind of like Susie's image of the mirror breaking for me. It's like we are all aspects of the divine that if you did have the holographic light shine through one aspect, you would see the whole. But our unity, I mean, we all express as God, but as aspects, but yet we all have to come into unity for that whole completion. If you see God as separate, she's not even complete till we till we reunite as an aspect of it. But I don't think that any, maybe any one of the aspects is in totality God, although if you looked at all of the makeup of it, like in a holographic image, it would still produce the full image. But 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 I guess that's kind of a mystery, but I, I, that helps me, you know, see see that in, in, in terms of all the, the zillions of expression of divinity that, that is the the amazement of the divine and and we are all each one of us uh, an aspect of that coming back into the unity and 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 yet still having all the parts of the whole does that make any sense absolutely yeah i know it's 10 o'clock i'll hurry but i'm glad we brought this up because i understand this and most people think that if you talk about this like you're a heretic you know, and and I think the reason why I understood it or understand it is through meditation and experiencing the oneness in nature. I've had times where I feel like the veil has been lifted and I just, I know it, you know, Jesus even said it, that we can do great things, even greater miracles and he performed so that we came in this world with that divine spark we were created in his image so we have to be gods we're all gods but some people think you're crazy when you say it so i'm glad we're talking about this thank you absolutely you know this was very beautiful thanks for bringing that up Susie. 
Uh, it's definitely a paradox and it's something that is very hard to grasp, but it is something that eventually we will all grasp. All right, it's 902. I'm going to fly through um, this last few slides really quickly. So we feel free to drop off if y'all want to. So we have the violet ray. It's also known as the crown chakra. And it is essentially the vibratory essence, the sum or the energetic signature of self, a thermometer reflecting overall balance, an analog to intelligent infinity. In this ray is a spiritual giving and taking from creator to creator. So if the violet ray is an infinite intelligence, then the indigo ray would be the logos, essentially. And the violet ray isn't really one, isn't a ray that's affected by daily catalysts like the other six rays. It's sort of just fixed. And like I said, it's pretty much a sum of all of our electromagnetic, all of our electromagnetic fields put together. And so pretty much when Ra or a member of the Confederation approach us, they're actually able to read our violet ray and see our overall energetic makeup. In fact, when we die, when all of us die, since it's harvest time, we're all going to walk the steps of light. Our violet ray is what's going to be read to see if our overall energetic sum is able to accept for density light. And so some basic blockages in the violet ray are a, a, a simply the total expression of the entity's vibratory complex of mind, body, and spirit. It is that as it will be. Balanced or imbalanced has no meaning at this energy level, for it gives and takes in its own balance. Whatever the distortion may be, it cannot be manipulated as can the others, and therefore has no particular importance in viewing the balancing of an entity. So there is no balancing or working on the violet ray. Like I said, it's just there to give the overall vibratory song. Now, balancing. The singers may be balanced through the use of meditation and balancing the catalytic thought or energy with its antithesis until the catalyst no longer has its prior effect on you. And Ra says in section 5.2, where you find patience within your mind, you must consciously find the corresponding impatience and vice versa. Each thought that, ha that a being has, has in its turn an antithesis. The disciplines of the mind involve, first of all, identifying both those things of which you approve and those things of which you disapprove within yourself, and then balancing each and every positive and negative charge with its equal. The mind contains all things. Therefore, you must discover this completeness within yourself. Quo says here, at the end of your day, so a quote gives us a pretty much um, practical guide on how to balance our chakras. And Claire, I know this is something you asked about earlier. So at the end of your day, it is well, therefore, to rest yourself, your mind, your body, and spirits in meditation and review the events of the day that provided you this fruitful growth, the catalyst of opposites, that much that each may utilize to become more and more the one infinite creator. For example, those of Ra use the catalyst of patience and impatience to demonstrate how this process is accomplished. If you have found yourself at some point in your day becoming impatient with yourself or with another person or with a situation that you wish would find its completion, you in your mind will lead of that situation that brought about the feeling of impatience. You magnify the lack of patience that you demonstrated when your patience was at its end so that it is blown out of proportion into a great lack of patience, a tremendous impatience that calls forth from your inner being its opposite, calls to the portion of your being which has patience, which has known patience, which has become patience. And that patience then is also allowed to become the magnified equivalent or partner of impatience. Together, they are filling your inner screen of perceptions so that the great impatience is balanced with the patience that comes from understanding. So to break that down step by step, pretty much. First, you want to go into meditation, and then you reveal all of the things, all of the events or catalysts that triggered you the day. It can be good or positive. And in that meditation, you recall and you bring back you that emotion, that energy, or that trigger. And then you magnify it and you feel it just as you did when, as it was happening. And then you amplify that even more to where you just, you just completely doused in the feeling of whatever you were feeling earlier. Where I use this impatience, it could be anger, it could be jealousy. And then after you found and relived what it was that you felt, you find its opposite. So in this example, Ross says, if you are impatient, then you find within yourself patience. Since we are 360 degree beings, we contain all things. So if a coworker pissed us off and we got really pissed and we were angry and impatient with them, then in our meditation, we would feel that, we would relive it in our head. And then we would think about the opposite scenario. Of what if I was patient with them? What if I was kind with them? And then you amplify that as well. And in amplifying the both, you find balance within that. 
quo says, then you look at yourself as a portion of the creator that has now been expanded to a greater portion of the creator so that you feel that the patience and the impatience are utilized in a balanced fashion to allow you to know more of yourself as a creator, which allows the creator to know more of itself through your experience. This is the journey of a lifetime, perhaps the journey of many lifetimes. For this process, the utilization of catalyst within your third density illusion is one which is infinite in potential and yet can also become that which is the creator within you now and forever. So that is essentially the balance exercise. Um, does anyone have any questions on this before we wrap up? Can we explore it again in more depth next week? <laughs> I, I think Absolutely. I would be more than happy to explore this. I know we went over time, um, so I kind of had to fly through these. So we'll go ahead and end it here. I want to thank y'all for staying on. I hope y'all learned and took something. I'll talk to Doug, and we'll definitely expand on this next week. The chakras, the energy centers, it's something that I mean, we could talk months on. There's so much material on it. Um, so I kind of just gave a brief overview today. Would anyone close us out? I'm sorry, Susie, go ahead. I was just saying that you, that was really lovely. You, you've done a great job. Really, really interesting. Thank Tremendous you. presentation. Tremendous. Yeah. Awesome, Mark. Thank, thank you, you Marcus. Lots of great participation. And thank you for stepping in. I mean, uh, I'm yeah. assuming you would notice. <laughs> uh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Does anyone, would anyone like to close this out with prayer? I will. All um, right. you, we'll see, see what happens. <laughs> hmm. Let's just close our eyes and bring in. Mm, Divine Creator, thank you for this time and this sharing. Thank you for this group and the great participation. Thank you for DeMarcus bringing this information to us. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you for the sharing. We are so grateful. Amen. Kept it short. Thank you all. Go bounty store shockers. Good night. All right. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.